next up, we are going to be talking about Memoirs of a Geisha, one of my favorite books. Guys, I'm excited to talk about this because it was made, it was actually written in 1997. It was published in 97. Uh, pretty old, but it's one of those books that had like the biggest impact on me. Um, reading it as a teenager and stuff. And I mean, what did you think? I know, Disha, you love this I book. I love this book. Um, I read it years and years ago and then read it again. And I just like it because it's, it's such a sweet story. She's, she, she's had such a horrible upbringing. Like, if you think about it, like she lost family and then she's... And it's a really nice love story because, you know, she's, well, at I the know. end. <laughs> but, um, no, I, it's, it's interesting because you never really think of a geisha and what they do. I, I mean, I wouldn't... It's an intriguing world. Yeah. I think it's yeah. one that, you know, you're curious about. And it's a fictional story, but it's based on a lot of facts. So all the little this... details, yeah. It yes, brings... it's quite interesting. It opens up this world that, I mean, I knew nothing about mm, before I yeah. read about it. And geishas interesting. are interesting because they're kind of like a step up from prostitutes but the word geisha means um, artists so basically their main aim is to entertain mm. uh, you on know, all through levels dance. <laughs> depending on who yes. you are yes <laughs> and the um, the sexual thing's not really talked no, about no. even though prostitution was legal till like 59 or something like that mm. so they obviously had they were and they had ge geishas yeah. and I mean, yeah. they were two very separate things although i do th obviously in the book um, there's bits in it where she gets her uh, misoage, like you know, the misoage is basically when you lose your virginity to somebody who the highest bidder. Yeah, the highest pays, bidder. Yeah. yeah, so you kind of think mm, that is kind of a little bit of uh, sexual, definitely. yeah, definitely. favors going on. It's really strange. Like I think with this book, you've, it it comes part of it comes across as quite glamorous and quite beautiful, and then the way she's way everything's described. You know, I would just get taken about, you know, taken back visually in my own mind, mm. and then, as you say, they drop something in like, and who wants to have her for the highest yes, price? Yes. And it's this kind of yeah. dark and and light the whole way through, and you get the culture, but you get the story, and you get all the different characters as well. It's like fused so well together. I think mm. it's like, written very well. Yeah, in really some is, books, you when you know you're looking into this new world, and when it was kind of actually published. We didn't know anything really about this world. M not most people didn't. So, on all levels, it kind of ticks all these boxes. I really love it. I love the movie as well. It's brilliant. Yeah, the movie's really good. Movie. It's as good as the book. Mm. I haven't seen the movie. Yeah, yeah I, I think really like um, the book. I'll have to see the movie. I just, I, I mean, she, I really, really feel for her. Like at the, throughout the whole story, you know, sometimes you get these characters that you just don't stay, care, about. care about. Well, with her, I do care, and I'm just thinking, like she makes, the, it ends up well for her, yeah. but then there's a character that pumpkin in the book yeah. who you know I feel so sorry for this pumpkin is like if she's not that pretty and she's not treated that well and so this is kind of a story yeah, of a lucky yeah. geisha like it, it ends so up well she, for her it's but a lucky it story, story well for her, her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's obviously stunning like with her grey eyes. That's and then, her selling yeah, point. Yeah. That's why she gets sort of elevated to, you know, another level. You know, she has much high profile. That's why she gets chosen to be a geisha in the first place. Yeah. yeah. Her sister just gets, sister, gets well, carted sister off gets, to be a prostitute. Well, she yeah. ends up, yeah. you know, running away. And yeah, so the, the difference between a geisha and a prostitute, yeah. there's a fine line. Yeah. And if you, cro you know, if you do something wrong, you could end up going a ro a rung down. So it's kind of... I mean, Obviously, people would choose to be a geisha in the in the book rather than a prostitute, mm. although the line's a bit blurred. Yeah. But I do think it's very interesting. You know, a geisha is, from what I read, it means um, moving art. So they're not supposed to be women. They're supposed to be kind of untouchable, mm. moving statues, which is I don't I I think it's such an interesting idea to be kind of more than a woman, but at the same time you can buy them to have sex with them. Do you think that, that's, that's the kind of key thing? Because you'll make, you know, with a prostitute, it is that real woman and you're paying for it. And this, you know, in a way, um, is kind of removing itself. Although it's so cultural, it's removing itself from, from culture and making them that little bit different so it's making it okay. It's almost like they've made, they've made up their own rules and then they've been accepted. An excuse to be like, no, it's fine. <laughs> well, in, in yeah. Japanese culture, apparently, like, um, uh, a guy's wife would not actually be the one that you'd have the passionate love affair with. It would be the geisha. Mm. Like they would go, or well, the concubine, have, yeah, or not the concubine, you know, this kind of mistress. Yeah. And they would be the ones that they'd have Just, the passionate love affair with. And I guess maybe that's what it was like as being a donor, yeah. which is like, um, you know, a wealthy man who kind of endorses the life of the geisha. Them, yeah. yeah, looks after them for their whole lives and stuff. Which they is have. interesting because most love stories kind of the fight, you know, everyone wants to get married and have a happy ending and stuff. And in this, not to ruin the ending, but that's not even what she wants. That's not what she can have, kind of. Like, she falls in love with someone and she doesn't think, we'll get married and have, you know, ha live happily ever after. Mm -hmm. She thinks, 
well, he'll get married to someone else, but he'll be in love with me. I and think he's he'll married, pay for me. Yeah. 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 It's but a business it, investment, isn't it, in a way? She's working yeah. out her security. Well, her security. Yeah. What, we re what I don't know much about is the actual relationships of the time, you know, for the actual men that were going to the geishas. Mm. What were their relationships like? Like, obviously, that'd be a whole other book, but it'd be interesting to know what the role of the wife is. Um, and you know whether the right, the wife actually you know is quite happy to them to have these affairs because they got work to do they got to clean the houses look after the children so you know I wonder how many of the wives actually know it goes on and they turn a blind eye or they actually yeah, promote they it kind of yeah. I haven't got time for all this funny business yeah. you go off with your lady you, know? you can actually pay to have a geisha experience so oh, really? Disha or any of you, if you feel like doing it. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. I'm not paying for a What are you exactly experience? paying for, though? Yeah. Are they going to be paying Maybe us? Maybe not that Because far you go. <laughs> <laughs> what, someone in, like, the Kimono going to serve me tea? Europeans can go there and have the whole geish, like, guess, get I dressed up as... with the makeup yeah. and the dress. Yeah, yeah. So maybe, maybe that's something outwards. to think about. No. Yeah, can mm. have a day out. Yeah. Do you want a day out? So Tokyo, let's go to Tokyo Yeah. So what would you rate this out of 10? 10. It's the best book ever. I did really like it. I'd probably... I read it ages ago and regret it and liked it still. So probably a, a seven, six and a half, seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd go for a nine. Like it a lot. Uh, I think I'm going to rate it a ten because I loved it that much. It was brilliant. I feel so <laughs> underrated. So that's the end of another show of Loaded Chick Lit. Join us next week.